Hi, and welcome back to the test bench. Today we're having a look at a Sony soundbar with no power, completely dead. Right now I have it plugged in right here. I'm going to press, uh, press the power button. We got nothing, nothing at all. I guess it's time to open it up. Let's have a look. The person I got this power bar from says they opened it up to see if they can find anything wrong at all with this. Um, and they couldn't, they couldn't figure it out. So here I am now opening this up and I do first thing I see is a wire not connected. So I'm wondering where that goes and if that may be, may be the problem. I highly doubt it, but I mean, it's worth a shot to take a look to see where it goes anyway. So it goes from here. I'm wondering if it jumps to here. I don't really see anywhere with a two prong connection right now. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, I can see the main connection here. And then this is the power board and this is the processing board. I do see an open connection here and here, but it doesn't seem to go to anywhere. It does say on the board that it's an LED plug. So let's just ignore that for now. I don't think that's going to really be the cause of, of what's happening here. So it looks like this board marries to this board via this small connection here. It's kind of hard to see. Um, so I'm going to give this board a once over check to see if power is being delivered to where it should be. And we'll see if we can figure this out. I now have the main board, the power board under a microscope. So let's have a look at the first thing I saw, which is the fuse. So we see right here, this component is labeled risk of fire, risk of fire, replace fuse as marked. And I believe this is the fuse right here. It says T3, 15 amp, 250 volt. So it's potential that this is bad. So what we'll do is we'll grab our voltmeter We will put it on tone or beep or whatever you'd like to call it. And let's see if I can do this. Yeah, we got the two prongs right there right at the bottom. Right, carefully see if we can get in there. We're not plugged in at the moment. Okay, one there. And then one down here. We do have a tone which means this fuse is likely okay. So that doesn't appear to be the problem at this time. We just had a look at the fuse on the main power board here. We're going to move on over to uh, this part of the board. And let me bring this up. In this section here, we have markings for the different voltages. So I think it would be best to test for those voltages from these pins. So we have, where's it marked here? Right at the top. We see from the top to bottom, it's telling us what our voltages should be. Uh, and the pins are numbered as well. So to make sure we're getting proper voltage to this board, we will measure each individual pin on this connection right here. So let's do that now. Pin one is our ground pin. Second pin in is also ground. Third one is our voltage for 25 volts. And so on and so forth. So what I'll have to do right now is plug it in. So I'm going to skip the ground pins. I'm going to 
to change it to, I believe we're going to be on DC. Let's just check. Okay, I got 26 volts. I'm going to see, maybe I can get this in here somewhere. I'm going to put it here, switch this over here. And we'll get an overview just like this. Yeah, that should work. Okay, so I'm going to put one pin here on the ground and we're going to check. We have 26 volts, as we should. Another 26 volts. Next three pins are ground. So 26, 26. That's a ground. That is also ground. Ground. That is 26 volts. 26 volts. 26 volts. And the, then ground. So good news, it looks like we're getting power from the power supply to the main board. So let's shift our focus over to the main part of the board to see if we can find out what's going on. I've taken a bit of time to remove the boards from the housing. So what we're going to do next is do some individual component testing to see if we can find the issue. Okay, I got my voltmeter there at the top corner just so you guys can follow along. So let's have a look here. We're going to start with these pins. I'm going to hook my ground up to the ground of the board. And again, we're going to test this, make sure we have 26 volts. Put that on the correct setting. We're supposed to be on DC. There we go, 26 volts there. And we should have 26 volts here, which means we should have 26 volts here as well. We do. All right, so let's follow this trace. So we see it comes up along here. Let's follow it. We're following this trace all the way up. Actually, we can just check this pin here to make sure we got 12 or 26 volts there, we do. Okay, let's follow it along. Okay, so it bypasses there. It goes to this MOSFET. This is the MOSFET here. So this is essentially a switch for power, which it senses the, vol the voltage here and then allows power to pass from here to here. So in theory, we should have voltage 26 volts up here, and then we should have 26 volts down here as well, as long as we have 26 volts here, unless this is faulty and this is our problem. So let's do, let's do a test. Let's check here. Yeah, 26 volts, we should have 26 volts here as well. We do, and we should have 26 volts there as well. Perfect. Okay, these three pins are connected, so they should all read the same. Yep. 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 Perfect. And then we should also see 26 volts down here. And we see 0.5 in dropping. On all the pins. Do we have any voltage here? Nope. What about here? We do not. So this this might be our problem then. This is the the point of the board where power comes in, hits here, and then distributes out to the board. So right away we've already found an issue with no power going through the board. Okay. So it looks like we've already found our first issue with the MOSFET on this board. I don't want to go any further because we know power is not reaching to any part of the board uh, except for the, the input of that MOSFET. What I'll do is look up the replacement 
for this to see if it's possible to get. I don't have high hopes um, and I don't have a donor board either. So I don't have any way to pull parts that are known good to, to fix this one. So I'll do a bit of research and I'll come back when I have a solution. Okay, it's been a few weeks. I was able to order the part. It has arrived. I have it set up under the microscope here. It's this, uh, it should be the right chip, 9561AGM. Let's just take a look at the old one here. That's it. 9561AGM. Okay, perfect. So we do have the right part. So next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to replace it. This will be my first replacement of an IC, uh, which is a chip on the board. I'm not 100% sure this is the problem, but I have a good sneaking suspicion it might be. I don't know. We'll find out. Let's give it a shot. Wish me luck. I am pointing the heat away from the capacitors. That's just to the right there. You barely see it on the screen. That's just so I um, I don't blow those up. So if they get too much heat, they will blow up. So I'm just adding heat to the board here, loosening this chip until the solder melts. I gotta see if I can pull it off. Okay, it's out. It wasn't so bad. Next thing we'll do is prep the surface for the new chip. Get a nice clean surface, add some new flux, add some new solder. I did get some new solder actually. Last video I talked about, um, oops. last video I talked about solder was no good. Uh, I did get this stuff. It is very, very good. Flux. Okay, let's clean this up. All the old solder's off. I'm going to apply some new stuff. Yeah, this stuff is nice and shiny. And it, it just sticks. No problems. New solder on there. New flux on there. Let's put the chip in place. Making sure we put the right one on. I believe that is the old one. I probably should have marked the old one. Something to note for next time. That looks like the old one. Okay, I did have the right one. Perfect. Almost there. Wait till solder melts. I'll give that a little push down. Okay, melting.
Very good. And then let's just finish up. Let's just see if it's on there. Yeah, technically that's on there. But we'll do a good job and make sure we got a good connection by going over those pins one more time. Just with the soldering iron. It looks to be on there. I think we're okay. I think we can actually give it a try now. Let's give it a try. All right. What we need plugged in is this control board right here. Let's get all this stuff out of the way so you guys can see what's going on. So if this does not work, unfortunately, I'm going to have to call it a no, a no fix, which I don't like to do, but at least we can say that we tried. Okay. That's pretty much out of the way. We can mostly see. Everything is clear. Nothing will short out. Let's plug it in and uh, see wh what happens. And where was the on button here? Hmm. No signs of life. Let's do the same measurement we did last time. Okay, I'm going to do this just on the bench here, not under the microscope. Just so you can see the meter. Put the negative lead here. And then we'll do right there. Two volts. And dropping pretty much the same as last time. No signs of life at all. Doesn't look like that was the issue. Well, unfortunately, this one is a no fix. We replaced the IC, which I thought might be the issue. Without having schematics of this aboard, um, I'm not able to troubleshoot any further. So I'm going to put it on the shelf for now. Maybe uh, one of you guys can let me know what you think. Uh, maybe we can find another solution or maybe I'll learn something else in the future and come back to this one. But for now, thank you very much guys for watching. I really appreciate you being here and sticking around to the end. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Uh, it would help me a lot. And if you have already subscribed, thank you so much. And we'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.